This presentation is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus video series. In this video, I'll discuss a specific concept associated with the 2018 AP Calculus exam, free response question AB4BC4, namely the mean value theorem. My name is Steve Kokoska. I'm a professor at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania, and I'm a former AP Calculus chief reader. Here's an outline of the information presented in this video. I'll begin by discussing a preliminary result, Rolle's Theorem. And I'll consider some applications of Rolle's Theorem, specifically to particle motion and determining real roots of a function. Then I'll present the mean value theorem. I'll try to illustrate this theorem and show that this result is very reasonable. And finally, I'll suggest a few theorems that are proved using the mean value theorem. Here's a little bit of background information. The mean value theorem is an important result because it's used to prove many concepts in calculus. Well, in all of mathematics. Because the mean value theorem is pretty easy to visualize graphically, the result seems reasonable. And before I get to the mean value theorem, I'll start with a preliminary result. And I want to remind you that Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem rely upon the concepts of continuity and differentiability. Rolle's theorem says, suppose we have a function f that satisfies three conditions. f is continuous on the closed interval a to b, f is differentiable on the open interval a to b, and the values of f at the endpoints are the same, that is, f of a equals f of b. Then there exists a number c in the interval a to b, such that f prime of c is equal to zero. I'm not going to prove Rolle's theorem, but here are a few graphs of some typical functions that satisfy the conditions of Rolle's theorem. In each case, it certainly appears that there is at least one point, c f of c, on the graph of f, where the tangent line is horizontal, and therefore f prime of c equals zero. Here the graph of f is a horizontal line. f of a is equal to f of b, and therefore f prime is zero everywhere. So there are infinitely many values where f prime of c is equal to zero. In this example, the graph of f is continuous and smooth, that is, that f is differentiable. f of a is equal to f of b. And there is a value c such that the tangent line to the graph of f is horizontal, and therefore f prime of c is equal to zero. In this example, there exist two values of c such that f prime of c is equal to zero. And here's one more example in which the graph of f is continuous and smooth, f of a is equal to f of b, and there is a value c such that f prime of c is equal to zero. You might think about counterexamples when at least one of the conditions for Rolle's theorem is not true. Here's an example involving Rolle's theorem and a polynomial. Consider the function f on the interval 1 to 7 find all the values of c that satisfy the conclusion of Rolle's theorem. First, we need to check to make sure the three conditions are satisfied. f is a polynomial, so it's continuous and differentiable everywhere. And f of 1 equals f of 7 equals 12. Therefore, f satisfies the three conditions of Rolle's theorem. To find the values of c guaranteed to exist, Find f prime of x, set this expression equal to zero, and solve. In this example, there are two values of c such that f prime of c is equal to zero. Here's how I might use technology to find the values of c guaranteed to exist and to visualize this result. On a calculator page, I first defined the function f. Again, remember f is a polynomial, so it's continuous and differentiable everywhere. And I use technology here just to check the third condition of Rolle's theorem. Finally, I used the solve command 
to find the two values of C. And here's a graph of F with all the relevant points marked and labeled. Here's how we might apply Rolle's theorem in a particle motion problem. Suppose a particle moves along a horizontal line so that its position at time t is given by the continuous and differentiable function s of t. In addition, suppose that s of a equals s of b. Now this means that the particle is in the same place at two different times. Well, Rolle's theorem says that there is some time t equals c between a and b such that s prime of c, which is v of c in the context of the problem, is equal to zero. So in a particle motion problem, this means that there is some time t equals c where the velocity is zero. There is also a nice application of Rolle's theorem to show that there is only one real root of a function in a given interval. This requires students to use various AP calculus concepts. Although we've seen some applications, the main use of Rolle's theorem is improving the mean value theorem. And I believe Lagrange was the first mathematician to state this theorem. The mean value theorem says, suppose f is a function that satisfies the following two conditions. f is continuous on the closed interval a to b, and f is differentiable on the open interval a to b. Then there is a value c in a b such that f prime of c is equal to the quotient f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a or equivalently f of b minus f of a is equal to f prime of c times b minus a. Let's take a closer look at this theorem. First, the MVT is an existence theorem. Similar to the intermediate value theorem or the extreme value theorem or even Rolle's theorem, it guarantees the existence of a value of C with a certain property, but it doesn't tell you how to find it. Rolle's theorem is really just a special case of the mean value theorem. If f of a equals f of b, which is the third condition in Rolle's theorem, then there must exist a C such that f prime of c is equal to zero. And we can interpret the mean value theorem geometrically. The slope of the secant line connecting the points a f of a and b f of b is given by this expression. So the mean value theorem says that there is at least one point c f of c on the graph of f where the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of the secant line. Here are two illustrations of the mean value theorem. And another way to think about this is, there is a point, say P, between A F of A and B F of B on the graph of F, where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line. Okay, so let's try an example in which we have to apply the mean value theorem. Consider the function F on the interval minus four to three. Find all values C that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem. First, F is a polynomial, so F is continuous and differentiable everywhere. So F satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem. Find the derivative F prime. Set F prime of C equal to the quotient F of 3 minus F of minus 4 divided by 3 minus a minus 4. Solving for c, there are two values here, and both are in the open interval, minus 4 to 3. Here's how I might use technology to solve this problem and to visualize the result. On a calculator page, I first define the function f. Again, I know that f is a polynomial, and therefore, f is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. I computed the slope of the secant line, and then I used the solve command to find the value of c guaranteed to exist by the mean value theorem. And the calculator found both values. Here is a visualization of this result. We can see the graph of f, the secant line, 
and two points on the graph of f where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line. That's pretty cool. Here are two applications of the mean value theorem. First, consider a particle motion problem. Suppose a particle moves along a line so that its position at time t is given by the function s of t. Well, the average velocity of the particle between t equal a and t equal b is given by this expression, s of b minus s of a, divided by b minus a. But the velocity of the particle at time t equal c is s prime of c. So if the conditions of the MVT are satisfied, at some time t equals c between a and b, the instantaneous velocity, s prime of c, is equal to the average velocity. And here's an application involving the maximum value of a function. Let's suppose we know that f of 0 is equal to 5, and f prime of x is less than or equal to 3 for all values of x. What's the largest possible value for f of 2? Let's suppose that f satisfies the two conditions of the mean value theorem. And let's apply the MVT to the interval 0 to 2. There exists a value c such that f of 2 minus f of 0 is equal to f prime of c times 2 minus 0. Well, solve for f of 2 and use the given information. And we have that f of 2 is less than or equal to 11. So f of 2 is at most 11. The mean value theorem can be used to establish some of the basic facts of differential calculus. You might consider proving these using the MVT. First, if f prime of x is equal to 0 for all x in an interval a to b, then f is constant on that interval a to b. Now, we already know that the derivative of a constant function is 0. This theorem says that the only function defined on a to b such that its derivative is always 0 is a constant function. As a corollary to this theorem, if f prime of x equals g prime of x for all x in an interval a to b, then the function f minus g is constant on the interval a to b. And that means that f of x is equal to g of x plus c, where c is some constant. Now this means that if two functions f and g have the same derivative, f and g must differ by only a constant. And their graphs are really just vertical translations of each other. Their graphs are quote-unquote parallel. They have the same shape, but they're shifted up or down. I hope this video provides some insight into Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem, a few AP calculus type problems, and the use of technology to solve and visualize these types of problems. And just a reminder, there are lots of valuable resources on the TI website. There is material there involving technology and calculus, classroom activities, and lots of calculator tips and tricks for test success.